we're going to have a look at the Kellenfold power station. Built in 1914, decommissioned in 2007, the Kellenfold power station powered uh, around about 30 to 40% of the energy for the whole of the city. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get in, but we're going to give it a go and see if there's a way that we can get some shots and some images of the control rooms and the old abandoned uh, dilapidated uh, surroundings uh, in that area. Before we do that, we need to fuel up, so we're going to get some breakfast. So we've taken a bit of a wrong turn and I think we've just started walking on a building site. Look, little green digger truck. We're trapped, we've now got to do a day's work. Give me a high-vis jacket, oh, let us out. There we go, the building site tour of Budapest. <laughs> We're in the Jewish quarter again and just noticed there's a burger place here called, it's called Deep Burger. Not Big Burger. <laughs> Not tasty burger, but deep burger. <laughs> if you like your burgers deep, come to the Jewish quarter of Budapest. <laughs> if you like your unicorn, you can always come to here. It's a sark. They love the unicorn around here. I see it advertising all the bars and all the shops. I've not tried it yet either, so. Today is going to be the mission to try some unicum. Or if you're not happy with the unicum in Sark, you can also go to Sark too. Some more unicum. Unicum barista. Some sort of coffee. Unicum coffee. Uh -huh. So just up here is the is the Europe's largest synagogue kind of like the cornerstone of the whole Jewish quarter which by the way is not a small couple of streets it's a whole area lots of people out in the evenings coming here to drink party lots of restaurants lots of beer places lots of burger places they have the tasty burgers here and they have the deep burgers as well if you do come here I would say be aware that there are a lot of tourists here I've heard lots of British people, like myself, lots of Irish people, lots of Spanish people, of course lots of local Hungarian people too. The Jewish Quarter seems to be the place where people come for stag parties, hen parties, I've seen it all. So if you want somewhere that's a little bit quieter, I wouldn't recommend coming to the Jewish Quarter in the evenings. If you do come, come early evening, because from about 7 or 8 o'clock it starts to get really busy. The restaurant inside is extremely full and the queue outside has about 20, 25, 30 people waiting. So we don't like to waste time queuing up. So we're gonna find somewhere else to go. What we should get a deep burger. A deep burger. A deep burger. <laughs> <laughs> How deep do they go? That's what I wanna know. How deep are their deep burgers? And are they open? No. If you do want a deep burger, they don't open until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Get like an eggs and avocado. Hungarian eggs. Right, we're having a French breakfast now. The problem is when you go into TripAdvisor, um, whichever restaurant or bar is, is right near the top or in the top 10, they're the places where everybody goes to. People flock to those places, so you want to try the best, but equally, you don't want to queue up for hours and hours just to try it then it sort of gets into the realm of being a bit of a tourist trap and I would say if you can go to the smaller quaint places maybe go somewhere a little bit off the beaten track we've not really done that today uh, which I think we should have done with hindsight I would have gone to somewhere a bit further out of the city centre and tried something a little less touristy so we're going to try this French place anyway see what it's like looked at somebody else's plate and it looked, looked pretty decent Okay. 
So we're finally out of the main tourist part of Budapest. Now we just need to find the power station and hope that we can get in. So it all looks very industrial around here. Looks like there's some gates there and it looks like they're locked. So it says here for unauthorized persons keep out. Are you authorized person? I don't know, but I might be an unauthorized person. We have to find a way to see how we can have a look around without getting arrested by the Hungarian police and spending the night in the cell. Let's see if there's another way around here. Let's have a walk around, see if we can get in to the abandoned Kellenfold power station. But look, we've got a little park here and a slide. So we're going to have a look around first and then I'm going to go in and ask about whether we can go in and have a look at the abandoned area. Maybe I'll slip him a few million uh, Hungarian foreign. So just in the distance there we can see the abandoned decommission part of the power station. there in the distance. Let's see, that's where we're headed to. The goal now really is to just try to get as close as possible to the power station and then try and figure it out from there. Maybe there's a little gap in the fence or you know some wire fence that's ripped out that we can sneak under. Doesn't look like it if I'm honest. Looks like there's some really tall fences up there but let's find out. I'm also very aware that I've been walking around the front of the main security part of this whole site and facility and they may have seen me with my camera and they may already be onto me. I have to be very careful about how I go about this. No gaps in the fences. So we're going to take a walk around here and see if we can loop back in some way. So I think we've actually found the real entrance. Okay, so this gate is open. Let's have a look. To be honest, I don't think we're going to get in to see the Art Deco and the control room. But I'm going to see how close I can get to it. So we're right next to the, the plant now, where we need to go into, but as you can see it's just completely all fenced off. Right there. We need to find a way in. I just don't know how, because these fences are really high with barbed wire right up the top. This is as close as to what we're going to get and the only thing standing between me getting in here and showing you the control room and all the history behind this this little padlock and this company here magnum security you can see all the broken windows all down here and the old wooden doors you see this building is actually protected by the Hungarian government so it can't be demolished which is why it still stands today in extremely uh, good condition all things considered I'll be attacked by a border collie if I enter so just up on the building up there there's a number of CCTV cameras and part of me hopes that there's somebody around here somewhere watching me who's going to investigate me 
and come over to me and say, what are you doing here? You're not allowed to come here. And I will tell them I'm here to see the control room. Can you let me in? Um, even just for 10 minutes, just for a quick look around. You can be with me, you can supervise me at all times. I kind of want that. I want someone to come out that I can at least maybe negotiate with, maybe appeal to their better nature. So the plan is to make myself as suspicious as possible. <laughs> Despite the warning, I can't see any dogs around here. Hey, doggy. No dog there. Tell me porky pies on that sign. I have no idea what it is. I really want to go in and see it. It's locked. Looks like this is as close as I'm going to get. I wonder what stories this building has to tell. Maybe if I just knock. So after the failed mission and journey to the Kellenfall uh, power station, we decided to do something a little bit scary. So they were fully booked when we went in then, but we're coming back in about two hours time to do like a haunted walking tour where they touch you and they touch you and they touch you and all stuff like that. I'll show you more later. Right, so it's our final night in Budapest and we go back home tomorrow. So we're just getting a few things set up now, getting all our clothes put away. We didn't go back to the haunted house earlier. We were just far too tired once we got back. So we called up, we cancelled the appointment to give space for somebody else to, to use that slot that we booked up. So what we're going to do now is go out for some food. I think we're going for a curry, see what happens on our last night, see if there's anything interesting that we can show. But apart from that, yeah, I'll see you very shortly. So we're just getting the metro now from where we're staying across to near where the parliament area is what i would say is if you do come here get the 24-hour pass it gets you on all travel buses trains works out at, at about five pounds each it's definitely worth it if you're going back into and trekking around everywhere you can also get single tickets as well for the buses and the trains but they're a lot cheaper they're about 70 pence but i think it's always good to have that security when you know you just want to go quick in and out you know venture around lots of different places so Definitely worth recommend getting the 24 hour pass and they also do a three day one but uh, I can't remember what the price is of that because we didn't actually get it because we did a lot of walking which is why we were so tired. The amount of walking is incredible and they have something as well called Go Budapest app. So the Go Budapest app basically means that you can buy your tickets online and then you can scan the QR code as you get onto the bus. So it's a really quick and easy way just to buy your tickets so you don't need to actually go to uh, like a t ticket booth or you know whatever so what's been your favorite part of this trip to budapest uh the haunted house you see she's got a very dry sense of humor because we didn't actually go into the haunted house as i mentioned earlier but for me I've enjoyed everything that we've done, 
for different reasons. The positives and the highlights for me probably is the Communist Children's Railway was very interesting. Just fascinating to see exactly how, you know, these children are actually working in the railway station. I know I've said before it's not a tourist trap, but it kind of is, but it's also genuine as well. They do actually work there. They're taking the cash payments, they're with their whistles, you know, queuing for the trains to depart. The train journey itself is interesting because you go all the way around and there's loads of different stops along the way that you can go and visit. So we only did one part of that. We just went to the chairlift part and then came all the way back down. It's just interesting on so many different levels. We've also gone to the Fisherman's Bastion. You know, the old fairy tale, medieval look. That was really nice as well. Again, that was very crowded. So I feel like we've done quite a lot of the very typical touristy things. But the one thing that I really enjoyed was the House of Houdini. I've always been fascinated by magic. And albeit that was a very short tour, probably one hour in total, the fact that we got to have a very, very close and intimate magic show. And then we got a tour around the museum or the House of Houdini. My advice as well is if you do go to the Fisherman's Bastion. Just below that is something called Hospital in the Rock. You will have seen some of the, the clips and the images of that, but they're really close to each other. So if you do come, you could probably do that in you know a good couple of hours because it's literally right next to each other. And that was the mistake that we made. So we're just arriving now at the highest rated Indian restaurant in Budapest. And it's called the Taj Mahal. So we're just going to go in now and I'll tell you some more about the things that I didn't like about Budapest. Okay, we've just ordered our food. Um, I've ordered a bottle of red wine. It's called the Taj Mahal Pinot Noir. Now this wine is specifically made for this restaurant and apparently it's a family created wine. So, I've just had a little glass of it. It does taste quite nice. Some of the things that we don't like about Budapest. What don't we like about Budapest? What? What's crowds mean? Crowds? <laughs> so I had to stop the video. I asked her what things does it like and she said, she said crowds. So I thought she said crowds as in um, you know, a negative word for a German person. And I thought there was not really many German people here. Not, not that I've noticed. So she got really upset with me. She was actually saying crowds. So one thing that we don't like is there was a lot of crowds in certain areas of the tourist destinations. Now, to be fair, it is what you expect. The second thing that I would say I maybe dislike a little bit about Budapest is that some of the entry prices to some of the attractions can be a little bit steep. I would say definitely on a par with what you would expect in the UK. We was a bit surprised about it. We thought the prices would be a bit cheaper. The third point I want to make is specifically about Hungarian cuisine. Now, we're in an Indian restaurant, as I'm giving you this information, because we didn't want to eat any more of the Hungarian food. After a while, you do get quite a bit bored of it. It's quite heavy, quite stodgy. We went to a, a highly recommended restaurant uh, on the first day, which you will have seen, and it was just very heavy. It was like thick meat and, and some red wine type sauce. Now, I'm not completely trashing on Hungarian food. It is nice. It just gets a bit tiresome after a few days. The fourth point that I want to mention relating to the food experience that you have in Hungary is that the service is included on the majority of, of the bills or checks that you pick up. Every single meal that we've gone out for and paid for um, has had the service included, which is normally, is it about 20%? No, okay, between 10 and 12%. I like to be able to offer a tip to the waiter or waitress that served me if it's been a good service. And when I've seen, when I see the bill come to me with that, you know, I'm, I'm almost hesitant to give uh, an additional tip on top of that because I've already paid for it. There's a whole debate there about tipping culture. In the UK, we, we, we don't have that at all. If it's bad service, you, you're, not, you're not getting a tip. Apart from all those small little niggly things that I've talked about, everything else has been quite good. We've really enjoyed it and we look forward to enjoying our last meal here 
uh, because we travel back tomorrow morning and that will be the end of the video I hope you all enjoyed it hope it was fun hope it was maybe insightful and I will be doing some more videos in future for sure so if you want to watch more you know what you need to do if you don't just comment on it and tell me to piss off but I will be doing some more in future we've got plans we're going to Asia so bye bye for now and I will see you again soon this is a bit of an encore so we've just got back to our apartment our Airbnb in Budapest so I thought I'd just give a quick update on how the evening was uh, we went for the curry at the Taj Mahal in Budapest the curry is very very good um, overall, the whole experience was really nice. The service is really good. You've got the, the waiters and waitresses dressed in kind of traditional Indian clothing. The ambiance, the music, the lighting, everything is great in there. But most importantly, the food was really, really good. And I live in the northwest of England, and I live very close to uh, the Curry Mile in Manchester, a place called Rush Home. Um, so I know what a good curry tastes like. That place... The Taj Mahal was a very, very good curry house. So if you do come to Budapest and you do want to have a good curry, definitely go to the Taj Mahal. I highly recommend it. And one last thing, we went out. I managed to buy myself a little souvenir and I'll leave you on this one. Bit of unicum. Bye for now and see you soon.